Hi folks, welcome to Keyboard Skills Pro here on YouTube. And my name is Tom, and it's a phenomenal pleasure to have your pleasure here today once again with another tuition video. And this time we're looking at the third part, the trio of the Maple Leaf Rag by Scott Joplin. Now in the other two videos we looked at parts one and two. So if you haven't seen parts one and two, yeah, I would suggest you check them out, uh, particularly if you're learning the full version. This is the original uh, full fat version of Maple Leaf Rag. And we've learnt the opening part, which goes like this. And we've also learnt the second strain. Etc. And then we also learnt that after the second strain, it goes back. which sounds very nice. Now, we're now leading into this trio part, and this is what I call part three. So we're not gonna do the whole trio, this is just the, the part where the key signature, you may notice, changes. So, what does it change to? Well, it adds a flat in, right there, you can see it, we've got a G flat. So when you add a flat onto the first four, B, E, A, D, G flat turns it into D flat. G major, D flat major. And this is the key that uh, Debussy writes. Claire de Lune in. It's also the piece that Andrew Lloyd Webber writes this one in. So lovely, rich key there from the music. So what happens then is you then have to think about a different set of keys. So here's the D-flat scale, and it's the scale that uses all the black notes on the piano. A D-flat major chord is used for our root chord. It's our home chord there. We've got A-flat is our dominant, and e, uh, G-flat is your subdominant number four, and E flat, often a minor, is number two. So those are the chords that we'll come across most of the time in this particular section. So let's take a look through the left hand first of all. Here's the score. So we're starting with octaves in the bass, E flat, and then form the chord A flat C G flat. That's A flat dominant seventh, A flat seven to the keyboard players and organ players out there. E flat goes to the A flat 7 chord. He then uses G flat to play the same chord again. Look, an F, which is a stepping bass note to E flat, and then C. And now we go to D flat, forming this D flat chord. Second inversion. A flat, F. Now that's interesting. Look, look at the bass note there. D flat, chord, A flat chord, F chord. So there you've actually got a, uh, a D flat um, uh, major chord all being broken up. D flat and then a D natural and that chromatic step walks to the E flat and then, oh thank you so much, he does the same bars again. Exactly the same look. D flat, A flat, so remember that, root, fifth, third. Now this time we're going to go, instead of up, we're going to go down, D flat, C, B flat. And then a massive leap to B flat seven. So you've got to really learn that chord. Most of the time, I'll give you a tip, in this part it's okay to keep your eye on your left hand more than your right hand. Your right hand stays in place. So a lot more, so we'll we'll look at that in a second. But this look, look at the bass here. What does he do there? That's right, he uses a B flat major arpeggio. Answering each bass note with a chord. Isn't that great? Now, down now to E flat, and then up to B, E, G, all flat, so that's E flat minor. Forming the chord, look, as soon as I play the bass note, look, I'm forming the shape, looking for the chord, two bars of that, 
Now this bar is interesting. Now this is where this bar, you need to concentrate on this one. I would rip this bar out and do it as a separate little learning project. There's two rhythms, follow the, follow the, and then caterpillar. Why would you follow a caterpillar? Well, Alice followed a white rabbit. We're gonna follow a caterpillar. Follow the caterpillar. So it's ta-ta, ta-ta, one E and a two E and a. Follow the caterpillar. And then straight, you've got to jump off that G. Straight onto A flats, look. Up to a D flat chord. Now we're going towards our cadence point, our ending sequence. B flat seven. It's a little B flat seven chord there, look. And then this is where he he's broken away up with the octaves there. And then we're going to have two chords, E flat seven, which is chord two, that's the, the secondary dominant. A flat, and then D flat, chord, chord. Now that rhythm, that we're going to see in the fourth video. Uh, so that's worth, worth going. Worth getting used to that. Here's the left hand all the way through. Now on these chromatic notes, a bit more emphasis there, makes it sounds a bit more grand. Nice and light, big sound, B flat. So that, you've got to look at that. D, F, B flat, E flat minor. Now, stay there. You've got two of the notes already, look. Just bring your thumb down, bring your little finger in. Jump to A flat, little B flat seven, chords only, E flat seven, A flat, D chord, chord. Now at the end, the second time, you're gonna go, ya da 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 da, D flat, A flat, D flat. Noticing there, look, a classical, Tonic, dominant, tonic, one, five, one. Used by Haydn, Mozart, and all the rest of them many years before Joplin, but still tried and tested methods that work. The right hand now doesn't move around. It stays a lot of the time in one place. So we're gonna start off with this chord of A flat, octave, the other two notes in between. Here we go then, one, now that's da, Ch-da. You can keep those a bit closer together if you want, or make the first one a bit more staccato, depending on how you want to style it. Notice all I'm doing there is moving the thumb up. That chord looks really different, doesn't it? It's just because the C has to be printed offset to let the B be printed. So just move your thumb up to B flat, and then you're going to do the middle two notes and answer with those to, f to B flat. So Basically, it's first chord on A, move up to the B, stay there, and then repeat it, back down, back up. And this time, we're gonna do three chords. But it's all the same, look. Dun, da, 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 there's the syncopation. Now we've got a, a D flat chord, look. So notice how that A and B look. Altering back and forth. So those two bars, have a good look at those. And then of course we know the left hand repeats, so does the right hand repeat? Yes it does. Back to A flat, B flat. And then. Now this time we change the ending, stepping up like that, A natural coming in for a bit of fun. And then we lose the D flat. See, look at that look. Da, da, da. And then B flat octave this time again. Move the thumb up. So it's the same rhythms look. Back to again. And then the da da da. Now, don't move. Stay where you are. Put your second finger on the E flat. Grab a B flat octave ready. Rest. Remembering the G flat. And then pivot round to C. Back to B flat. Okay, so rest, making the octaves nice and pronounced, rest. 
So that needs to be quite loose. Okay, and then all you do is you stay there and just sidestep up to D flat, putting your second finger on the E. Now most people are going, well hang on, it says F flat, why are you playing an E? Well, F natural, flatten it half a tone, you get an E natural, okay? And then you do this. Now, I want you to notice there what doesn't move. Repeat, what doesn't move. It's that one, isn't it? There you go, it's there all the way through, look. Those are walking down like that, D, D, C, B. Okay. And then we go to D flat major with a little E flat minor chord there. Remember the G's are flat, so let's say so otherwise. And then put the G natural in for this final chord. We get the G flat back. And then we finish with a D flat. And then up to A flat. And then alternate with that. Great sounds there from the Maple Leaf Rack. Okay, let's now try a slow version of popping it all together. One, and, two, and. Moving the thumb up low, and again up, and back. You've got to move that thumb look. Nice use of the bass there. So look there, every half a beat moves back and forth look. Here we go, B flat seven. Look at the left hand. E flat minor. Keep your hand quite, keep your wrist loose there. And then stay where you are. D flat octaves with F flat. You're on top of that chord from the bit before. Oop. Chords. And with those chromatics, glide up, you get a nice sound. Very nice sounds there from the Maple Leaf Rag. That's the trio, that's the third part of that wonderful piece. So I do hope you've enjoyed that. As I say, work on the hands apart. Um, it's very easy, one little tip, I, I'm a bit guilty of doing this. You have to be careful that the music doesn't start playing Chinese whispers. Because sometimes it's easy to go and, and those notes can get muddled up so watch out I, think I did that a couple of times in that slow rendition but of course artistic license you can just claim on that but anyway it's uh, it's all good fun thanks so much for watching this tutorial if you've enjoyed it please do hit the subscribe button and it'd be great to go as a subscriber if you'd like to hit the bell you'll also then basically be able to get a notification every time i upload a new video which we try and do weekly here on keyboard skills pro do check out my website for more information on what I do, concerts, audio CDs, and you can also purchase some of my piano music books, tomhorton.co.uk. My sincere thanks to the following patrons of mine on patreon.com who support me with a monthly uh, contribution to the production of the videos and helping buy things like cameras and software and stuff. So if you would like to support me on Patreon.com, please do visit the links in the description and that will be absolutely fantastic. But to each and every one of you, whether you subscribe, 
help out or just simply watch my videos here on Keyboard Skills Pro on YouTube. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Enjoy learning the maple leaf rag and we will speak and see each other all being well very soon here on YouTube. All the best. Thanks so much.